It's taken 846 days, but we have finally seen it. We have seen Bitcoin post an all-time high. Just, it has just managed to clinch a new all-time high, but I don't think this is the last of it. In this week's roundup, a couple of things that I want to cover are the institution, uh, institutional adoption of Bitcoin and the amount that institutions are now holding. It's a very, very high number. I also want to talk about the outflows that we're seeing out of gold ETFs, despite gold being at all-time highs. And then finally, I want to touch on the meme coin mania that we've been seeing, but the big news is all about Tesla. And there's a rumor, not necessarily even a rumor, but there's speculation, heavy, heavy speculation, that Tesla might be buying Bitcoin again. And we'll get to that later in the video, so stick around for that. Now, first up, I want to talk about a piece that was released by Ecoinometrics late last week. I think it was Friday, and they were talking about the institutionalization of Bitcoin. And for Bitcoin, they were saying to become this multi-trillion dollar asset, you need to see this institutional money coming in. There's no way around that. And that is something that I wholeheartedly agree on. And in their associated graphic, they have said that now more than 10% of all Bitcoins, so 10% of all Bitcoins that will ever exist are now held by institutions. Um, it actually looks closer to 11 when you look at the chart on here. Uh, we can see that 4.5% of that 11% are held by the ETFs. And we've seen those ETFs accumulate that 4.5% in such a quick period. It's been so quick in terms of a turnaround. Then we've got governments, uh, private companies, public companies holding the remainder of that BTC supply. So call it 10%. We know it's slightly over, but call it 10%. That means that 10% of all the Bitcoins in that can ever exist would be 2.1 million. So they cumulatively hold 2.1 million BTC. Unfortunately, it's not the dream that most um, cypherpunks probably had when they first dreamt up Bitcoin and we're using Bitcoin in the very, very early days. Um, so the true hardcore Bitcoin users probably think that institutional adoption like this is not a good thing. But for investors like me and for investors like yourself, if you are an investor, this is a good thing. Next up, I also want to talk about the price of gold. Now, gold has been making all time highs alongside Bitcoin, if you hadn't been aware of that. So this is the Bitcoin chart. But actually, let's skip down to the gold chart, which is CFDs on gold. Yep. So we're on the gold chart here. We're on the weekly time frame. And if we zoom out, let's go on the monthly we can see that gold is now well above its previous all-time highs. So its previous all-time highs were around the $2,084 per ounce. And we can see that price this week has climbed to, it's currently $2,178. 2, uh, $2, so it's well beyond its previous all-time high price. But going back briefly to the Ecoinometrics article that was released on Friday, they found out last week that Unlike Bitcoin ETFs, where we're seeing this massive amount of inflows week on week, gold ETFs are predominantly seeing outflows. So there's an excessive outflow coming from gold ETFs. Now, that is interesting considering that gold is still at these all-time high prices. You might be thinking that people aren't willing to separate with their gold or exposure to gold through these gold ETFs. But according to these, this data, they are and... I wonder where they're going. <laughs> we will see in the future. Now, before jumping on to meme coin mania and the news about Tesla, I wanted to bring your attention to the crypto fear and greed index, which has this week peaked at record highs of 90. So the index has scored a uh, number of 90 on the index, which means that we are in extreme greed. Now, the interesting thing here is that the score of 90 when you trace that back through time, the last time that there was a score of 90 was back in February of 2021, I believe. So here we are with 7th of March, 2024, and then we trace it back and we can see that February of 2021 uh, going all the way into November and December of 2020. Now, if you had the whole idea around, around the Bitcoin fear and greed index is that you do the opposite to what the majority are doing. So if the majority are feeling extreme greed, you take that opportunity to sell. 
Now, if you had acted on this signal in November and December of 2020 or February of 2021, you would have missed out on potentially 12 months of further upside. I would take the fear and greed index with a pinch of salt and it needs to be collaborated with other indicators, whether that be technical indicators or on-chain indicators. Um, on-chain indicators, which I did mention in this weekend's 8020 crypto newsletter. So if you aren't a subscriber of my 8020 crypto newsletter and you want detailed insight, insights on a weekly basis around the macroeconomics that are driving the market, altcoin deep dives, that is the place to head to. And I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. Now, I also want to briefly touch on meme coin mania. We've got the Pepe chart here in front of us. Um, we can see that over the past two weeks, Pepe has at its peak climbed by nearly 600% in the space of 14 days. We've had a little bit of a drop down now. It's over still over 500%, which is insane over the space of two weeks. Now I am, as you, if you've been watching my channel and you're in the community, have been in the community for a while, you'll know that I am not a massive fan of meme coins. Um, I think they have their, I think they will always have their place in the industry. I know that they will always have their place and what I want to say is that they are doing one thing beneficial here. Because the meme coin mania has exploded over the past few weeks, we have seen on-chain fees being driven to new yearly highs. And when on-chain fees are driven to new yearly highs, the associated layer one cryptocurrencies, such as Ethereum, the Solanas of the world, climb too, which is what we are seeing at the moment. Layer ones are starting to find and build momentum which is great to see. So although I am not one for meme coins, because I think they shed not the best light on the industry in terms of what they do, in terms of ticking over those on-chain fees, that is a good thing. And then finally, we come to the juiciest story of this week. Is Tesla back in the Bitcoin market? It kind of never left the Bitcoin market. It has always had Bitcoin holdings. But if you cast your mind back to 2021, I believe it purchased $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin to put on the company's balance sheets. And then it quickly reversed that decision, sold into the market, firstly to test the liquidity within the market to make sure that it was um, a, val a valid idea. And then it, I believe they sold a, a lot more. So that their holdings dropped considerably. Now, Arkham Intel or Arkham Intelligence an on-chain analytics provider, have recently added Tesla's and SpaceX's wallets to their internal dashboard. And this has happened this week. And then the Web3 sleuths among you, the detectives out there, have notified everyone that previous to Tesla's um, on-chain analytics getting onto Arkham, and according to Arkham's now platform, they have acquired another 1,789 BTC since their last earnings report. So their last earnings report was 1,789 BTC less than what this wallet is now saying. So we can see the wallet here on um, Arkham's dashboard. Um, we can see its holdings currently. So 11,509 BTC worth approximately 802 million, which we can see at the top here. Now, when Tesla, although they've been holding Bitcoin, a little bit of Bitcoin for a long time, and they've never sold all of it, when Bitcoin initially got in in 2021, it was kind of like a stamp of approval, seal of approval for companies putting this on their balance sheets due to how big Tesla is. So if they do come out during the next earnings report and say, look, well, yeah, we have purchased another 1,789 BTC, that is going to be surely bullish for the price of Bitcoin and the whole sentiment behind the crypto market. So that is definitely by far the juiciest story we have seen this week. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think Tesla have added Bitcoin to their balance sheet? Or do you think this is, as some are saying, just an accounting error? Let me know. So now let's turn to Bitcoin's price chart. And uh, these are some of the things that I have pointed out on the weekly time frame this week. So at the time of filming this, we can see that Bitcoin is currently well above the last zone of resistance on my chart, which was at 60, just under 68,000, between 67 and 68,000 dollars. So if it get, if we get the weekly close, and we are now uh, nine hours away from the weekly close, 
If we get the weekly close above, that would suggest to me that the bulls want to continue taking this higher and we are more, more than likely to see Bitcoin head into price discovery mode. Let me just quickly shifty this along. There we go. Now you can see both the volume and the RSI at the bottom of the screen here. So previously, if you couldn't see the bullish volume, we can see that it's up, it's ticking up week, at, week on week. And we can also see that the RSI is currently at a score of 88 on the weekly RSI indicator, which again suggests that the bulls are fully in control. Um, then finally, during the week, we saw this really strong retest. So we saw Bitcoin peak to its uh, fresh all-time highs on Tuesday, and then a quick drop down retest of $59,000, $60,000 level. Um, and again, then shoot back up, which again is a really good sign that bulls want to take this higher. The momentum is still with the bulls at the moment. So with Bitcoin continuing to tease all time highs, what is the next play here? And when we saw finally Bitcoin breach that $69,000 level during the week, it turned almost immediately lower. And why is that? Well, I think that $69,000, the previous all-time high, was a fo key focus point for the majority of investors out there. So there was likely a massive amount of take profit and short entry positions placed at that all-time high level because everyone is just super focused and tunnel vision on the all-time high price. And that, I think, is why we saw the massive spike down to $59,000. But then we've seen Bitcoin once again recover. So with a lot of those positions now removed, we've got rid of a lot of take profit positions. The short positions have now for sure been liquidated because we've seen this so much bullish momentum come back into the market. So that means that if Bitcoin continues to climb, there should be less resistance at that previous all-time high level. So around the $69,000 level where we are right now, it's currently at $69,300. There shouldn't be a lot of resistance left at that level. With that being said, we've got nine hours left. If we get a weekly candle close back below this zone of resistance, at $67,000, then it might suggest that we found a more of a local high, at least for now, or we might see a sideways motion, sideways ranging for a short period until the market makes up its mind as to where to go next. So as always, keep those eyes focused on the Sunday close. Finally, all that's left for me to say on this weekly roundup is if you want more detailed daily insights, then go and check out my other socials, including my Twitter X profile at Access All Crypto. But if you want then more in-depth deep dives on a weekly basis, just one email a week, get yourself on my 8020 Crypto newsletter. That for me is where I try to share the most detailed crypto investing in, uh, advice that I can on a weekly basis given the time that I can dedicate to this space. So it would be great to go for you to go and check that out. Of course, if you've enjoyed this video, hit a like down below and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Things are looking so good for the market right now. I am so excited for what the remainder of 2024 is bringing.